everybody. Time for another Me Time Gamer podcast. How's it going, timekeepers? Welcome to episode 17 of the Me Time Gamer podcast. How's it going today, everybody? How's your morning, evening, afternoon, night, wherever, whenever you're listening to this? Hopefully it's going well. I'm going fantastic as usual. Jonathan here and with another podcast, like like I said last time, last podcast. It's always so awkward starting the podcast when you're doing it alone. I never know what to say. So we got a packed show today. There's a lot of news in the last week since the last podcast. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of things happened uh, in the last week. Uh, so first thing uh, before I start off, if you want to follow, if you want to help out the podcast, of course you can follow, subscribe to the podcast everywhere. Uh, Me time gamer podcast using going to iTunes or Google Play or even uh, tune in and also everybody else where the feed uh, was uh, put on by other people and stuff like that. So the, yeah, the stream's pretty much everywhere. If you're watching this in the video format, of course, you can go definitely check that out. And of course, if you want to watch uh, the video where it's accompanied by some of the trailers I talk about or uh, accompanying gameplay or that week's thumbnail, you'll see it uh, in the video at youtube.com for slash gamer. And of course, you can follow me everywhere, social media, social, social, social media at Meantime Gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram also. So for the start of the week, uh, so a bit of a run through of the show, we're going to start off by talking what I played in the last week since we last talked or I talked <laughs> the last stream. And also we'll be going on to the news of the last week and then we'll finish off with a kick starting it of course i found one that was interesting to me and will probably be interesting to you because there's still a lot of time left to uh, back the game so far and then we'll of course conclude the podcast with the usual rigmarole of finishing podcasts so without further ado let's just start and get right in so what did i play in the last week so i played a lot of small games again that's one thing i like playing for the youtube channel itself it's a lot of small little games i played uh I played a game called uh, Juice. Sorry, what was it? Juice of God's Future. I'm like, oh, that's a small little game that took me about 10 minutes to play. As a fun, like retrospective on um, choosing your people for your society, how you want your society evolve. It's a bit weird. It's very. Um, it's uh, I don't know if socially engaging would be the proper term for it. But definitely go check out the video on YouTube. Would definitely appreciate if you do that. Uh, it was a fun little game to play. You guys can definitely check that out in the video description. Uh, in the video of that in in the description of that video you should find the link if you want to try the game out for yourself um, and yeah that was one of the games I played I also played uh, finish watchdog that was last uh, two weeks ago I finished I finally finished out uh, outlast 2 man that was a hell of an ending of a game I really enjoyed that ending uh, it, it just I, I, I just I just uh, blazed through the ending of that um, of that uh, uh, of the last episode there I played for an hour and 40 minutes uh, to get through it there so yeah I had to cut the recording the recording there sorry I had to go uh, check on my daughter there <laughs> so yeah I was playing out last uh, is uh, very enjoyable I really I really enjoyed the game the ending uh, was a bit um, would I say predictable maybe a bit I, I, I find I found that the game was uh, very resemble it resembled a lot the first game not not as story wise, but it the same. It had the same atmosphere to the game, uh, which uh, was still very enjoyable. The mechanics felt a lot tighter than the first one for sure. And uh, yeah, definitely go check out the game, the the playthrough I played. Uh, I would really enjoy that. And you can definitely try the game out if you like horror games. It's definitely one to definitely check out. Uh, if you guys usually some of you guys like playing horror games during Halloween, you're probably a good one to pick up for. Did I play forty dollars for it when I paid for it? Yeah. So yeah, there was a couple little, uh, oh, I started playing in the last week, I also started playing Far Cry Primal, actually two, three days ago, I started playing that on the stream, and uh, by the time, yeah, the, there's already the first video out on YouTube, if you guys want to check out the first pl part of the playthrough over there, uh, it was a very, fun, it's a very fun game, actually, I'm really enjoying the mechanics of it, like, it, it takes what Far Cry is good for, and just adds many more other things, many awesome more things, oh, sorry couple awesome things on it uh, that were very that really improved the game very very gracefully and uh, really enjoyed it so uh, would I think that's all I played for this week a lot of uh, other small little game you can go check out on YouTube there they're all there from the past week or so since the last podcast that I put that I uh, recorded and uh, from there on we'll move on to the news all right so our first article of news comes from Ubisoft uh, again, Ubisoft a lot in the news this week or the last week. 
Uh, for the one we're going to start off is with South Park, The Fractured Butthole. Uh, actually, they finally announced a release date for it, which is October 17th of this year. Now, hopefully, they'll stick to that date because it, who knows? They've been working on it for a while, and um, hopefully, they'll be able to come out with it. So the Ubisoft blog uh, goes uh, goes as follow. It says. Um, Ubisoft and South Park Digital Studio announced that South Park The Fractured Butthole will be available at partners across North America and Europe, Middle East, Asia, and all that on October 17, 2017 from the creators of South Park, Trey Parker, and Matt Stone, the developed and developed by Ubisoft San Francisco, The Fractured Butthole is an outrageous sequel to the 2014 award-winning title, South Park The, the Stick of Truth, which is a game I wish I had time to play. I actually have it on Steam, I just didn't have time to play it yet. Uh, and the article continues it will be released on uh, Xbox One, PS4, Computer Entertainment System, and the Windows PC. And then the article com- com- explains the game a bit. I'll let you guys go figure what the game is about. Yeah, so South Park, if I remember when the Stick of Truth came out, it got a good, uh, a very good vibe out of it. A lot of people enjoyed that game a lot. When they uh, when they played that game, it had a lot of uh, a lot of out- outpour of affection. I guess I guess we can say. It was, uh, I didn't watch any gameplay of it, but a lot of people played it, and uh, yeah, the, the, the general consensus was that the game was really awesome. I, I, was it turn-based? I don't remember. I never remember, I don't remember exactly some of the gameplay, but uh, yeah, so that's the good little news for some people there that, that enjoy the South Park game. I guess now it's a series now, and uh, they'll probably make more of that with the, um, with the input of Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Uh, because you, the, apparently they, they're very involved in making the game itself. So that's always good to hear. Uh, so the next little piece of news I got for you guys today is uh, the long-awaited uh, sequel to Destiny, Destiny 2, has finally been announced, la- announced last week at a big event they did in New York or L.A. I don't remember exactly the details. So so on the DestinyTheGame.com website, uh, they have a little splurger for their Destiny game that says that the journey of Destiny 2, you're a, one of humanity's last remaining guardians, you, your home, your power have been taken from you by a brutal, the brutal invader Gaul. With humanity on the brink, it is up to you to fight back and reclaim the world. So it, 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 it has a lot of feel of the, the pre. it looks a lot like Destiny 1 of course, but um, the Hopefully, right now I'm playing the gameplay reveal trailer. You will be seeing on the video at youtubecom slash And uh, watching the trailer was very interesting because they did show like the three main sort of um, I don't remember. I played Destiny for a month when I got it at launch, and I didn't play after it, so I don't. Some of the terms are com- complete. I completely forgot them. And um, so the three big bosses of the three different types of guardians you can have the. Uh, the hunter, the titans, and the warlock. There are like in the in the trailer itself. If you're if you're not watching the video format, and they're sort of the last hand in the tower uh, in Destiny. There, and you're he's, uh, the the I guess the warlock is trying to protect everybody from the the remaining people from dying from the the main attack there. So the trailer does it does hype up the game really good, and the game is coming out uh, if I saw correctly somewhere on September 8th. Let me try to find it here. I think it is. I can't. I can't find it anywhere here. But yeah, you can pre-order it on the website. They, on the website itself, you can go to the game, the the game portion, and they got like a, another thing. Game modes. Uh, Destiny 2 provides an unprecedented combination of cinematic storytelling, thrilling solo adventures, and cooperative, competitive, and public gameplay, all seamlessly woven into an expansive online world. Rally your friends and venture alone. The choice is yours. And then they have game. Yeah. They have all that, then they have the pictures of the, the different guardians and then the different armor. Pretty much pretty much what you saw. Honestly, the way I, I enjoyed Destiny the first time I played the, the original game. Honestly, this looks a lot like more Destiny, which people and I am pretty sure will appreciate. Um, we have to see when it comes out, how it looks and how it feels. I know at the uh, the Destiny event they were allowed to play some of the game some of the game at the event. Uh, since it's coming out soon, I uh, would assume they would have some game ready uh, to play there. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much if you if you guys are into Destiny, you guys are probably already following the Destiny thing. You probably already know about this. For me, like like I was saying, per- personally for me, it seems a lot of the same. Uh, I, I enjoyed Destiny like when I when I uh, back when first Destiny came out, I reviewed the game 
and I personally gave it an 8 when a lot of people were giving it shit for not having a good story and stuff like that. So hopefully this time around they'll be able to give a very good story to the game uh, without having to rely on grimoire cards like last time, which were a fine addition, it's just that it sucked that if you wanted to know more you had to go in the application or uh, out of gamer, I don't remember exactly where it was, to try to find uh, more story into the game itself and they sort of just skipped over this campaign mission. Was a bit sad there. Uh, funny thing too is, I don't know. I don't know what happened with Destiny, but uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember. But a couple months, a month back or so, uh, EB Games or GameSpot, uh, GameStop uh, had a had a, a thing where you can bring your games back for ten dollars minimum. Ten dollars, they'll give you that. And uh, when I brought back Destiny, they were like, "No, we're not. We don't need Destiny." And this is a small store I go to. Usually, it's a small store in my town. And uh, there's like I already have the small, t the small, the, the small shop. Just like the guy looked at me, he's like, I can't take this game. I already have 60 first, first edition of 60 copies of first edition. I, I don't know what to do with them anymore. Nobody's buying them because you have all the expansion, the Taken Kings, and all that that came out, and nobody's buying the original game, of course. So I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I won't, I won't add another one to your, <laughs> to your stack of burning, burning useless games in the back there. So that was the funny thing about the, the first game. Hopefully, this game will have a lot, a lot more into it. Uh, the, the, what I can see from Destiny 1, uh, the community managers there, the, the people that take, took care of the game really listened to the people with updating the game a lot and gave what the players want in the game. And hopefully this is more of the same. Uh, like I'm saying, it looks a lot the same, but there'll, there'll be more. Hopefully it's not just a revamped of the, the places you already seen before and the multiplayer maps you already seen before and stuff like that. Hopefully it does improve on what it's already there, which it should if you're releasing a second title. You're hoping they, they've been working on this for two, three years now, if I remember correctly. So yeah, that's it for Destiny. If you guys want to check that out, you're probably looking at the trailer. If you're looking at the game mode, or you just go to DestinyTheGame.com and you can have all the rest of the info they released there for the game itself. On to the next article, which is the only one sad piece of news I had for the game. It did, it did quite uh, caught me by surprise, and I was a bit upset about it. But uh, I guess I guess it's for the better. It is uh, on uh, RockstarGames.com Newswire. Uh, they say Ra Red Dead Redemption 2 is now coming spring 2018, which is really sad because I talk about that game so so often. I was like, oh man, I can't wait this game to come out. This game is going to be so, so fucking awesome when it comes out. It's going to be so cool. And of course, right now, if you're watching the YouTube video, I'm going to be, you're going to be seeing some of the screenshots they released. The, it was like, oh, we're, the game's not releasing in, in fall, but here's a couple of screenshots, which is nice of them. I wish they would have released maybe a little bit more of a trailer, but hey. If waiting a bit more is going to make the game that much better, um, that so be it. It's going to be a lot better. So the article, the article itself goes as follow: uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is now set to launch spring 2018 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now I know a lot of people out there are like a bit pissed off because they didn't announce the PC version yet. Which, uh, if you know, if you know Rockstar, that's how they do it every time. PC is always the last uh, thing, the last thing they do. Which is weird because right now uh, GTA 5 is one of the biggest game on PC right now. Which is uh, oddly enough, it's not because of the game itself. It's because of the online uh, RP servers going on. Which is, if I had a better PC, I would probably be on that. That would be so awesome to play live stream and all that, uh, where people are creating characters and then you sort of like when you uh, I don't know in the past I talked to, or some of the past videos I've made about a uh, uh, Arma 3 RP or like uh, Arma 3 Life or whatever. Uh, this is basically the same thing. So you can be caught, you can become a cop, a robber, ambulance worker, and all those things. You can create your own persona, go to jail, and all that stuff. So it's basically, it's basically the same thing as Arma 3 put on the GTA 5, which is pretty cool. And like, it's just, it looks a lot better. I, I've seen people stream it. It seems very cool to play. Like, there's a the storytelling behind it. I, I've been fascinating for the last year or so about like, uh, R, RPing, r role, sorry, role playing games like Arma 3 and GTA 5 uh, how you can create a new story from a base game on private servers and stuff like that because most of the time on those servers you have to uh, you have to uh, apply to become a citizen uh, air quotes there a citizen of the town to, to be uh, to be allowed to play on the server and you have to follow certain rules uh, I don't know if you guys want to know more about it you can probably find it on different RP servers for Arma 3 and uh, GTA 5 there like you can't just jump into one server because they, they try to eliminate like trolling and people that don't understand the rules and stuff like that and uh, yeah so the article continues as follow uh, the outlaw epic 
The Outlaw Epic set across the vast and unforgiving American heartland will be the first Rockstar game to create it, create it from the ground up for the latest generation of console hardware, and some extra time is necessary to ensure that we can deliver the best experience possible for our fans. We are very sorry for any disappointed this delay causes, but we are firm believers in delivering the game only when it is ready. We are really excited to bring you more detail about the game this summer. In the meantime, please enjoy this selection of new screenshot from the Red Dead Redemption from the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. So looking at these screenshots, I'm hoping these are not like CG trailers, uh, CG screenshots. They do look like actual screenshots from the game itself. So then, but they do, they look extremely nice. It looks like a very well improved Red Dead Redemption. Uh, we see some some of the guns. We see uh, some of the towns. Hope I really. It's one of those things that I really can't tr can't wait to try out next year. I guess. And uh, I guess we're gonna have to wait a bit longer, unfortunately. Like I said, it was very, very, uh, very. It sucked a lot. Uh, one thing I saw today concerning uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, because they got a lot of, um, not not they didn't they didn't get a lot, a lot of shit. It's more um, how to explain it. A lot of people were saying, well, how how is this gonna finance or how 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 releasing it in the summer will impact the um, the the sales of the game? And I think the I think it's the CEO from uh, Zenimax, which is the owner of Take Two Interactive, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly, but he was saying like ga games like this from Rockstar Game. It doesn't matter when we when they re when we release the game. It's uh, it, the game will sell. You like it or not, it doesn't matter the period of the year with that we release them, which is a bold statement, but it's true. I mean, like. When we see the last Red Dead was released in March, if I remember, remember when it when it was released, and GTA was released in actually in October, if I remember. Yeah, so they, they, they can release their game anytime they want, and they'll get a shit ton of people. Like it, the games are unbelievable. Rockstar, I don't Rockstar has made consistent consistently awesome and like ten out of ten games for a, for a long time. Even I think the only games that didn't like. Got like a breakout success where like uh, beater uh, beaterator I don't think and even that I'm it might I might be wrong it might have been a fucking awesome game and they did tabletop tennis game or something like that I know even like um, one game they haven't uh, they haven't uh, talked about in a while uh, just give me a second I just have to take a phone call I'll be right back all right I'm back from the phone call so yeah we're talking about Red Dead Redemption two being delayed yeah I think I pretty much said everything I needed to say about it, it yeah it sucks that the game is delayed. Uh, I guess we're going to have to content ourselves with uh, other games that are coming out this year. We're talking about prob probable other games coming out this year. Our next article news talks about Far Cry 5. Now, this this game, for they, they started talking about it last week, and this Friday coming up, they're going to be revealing gameplay or uh, the game itself. And I'm assuming, since they, they seem to be like already taught, like showing, a, they're probably going to be storing gameplay and stuff like that, and really starting to ramp up the hype for it probably going to be releasing it this year i'm hoping that would be a good replacement for for red dead i guess for now but i'm really liking uh so yeah on their on the ubisoft blog there there's uh their article far cry 5 welcome to hope county so the game's taking place uh, hope county uh, fictional county of hope uh, in montana so which is weird because usually far cries take place in like a uh, like um, forest, foresty type areas uh, with uh, rebel factions and stuff like that. Uh, but this time, allow, uh, this time, uh, uh, well, 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 let me read the article here. So the first, the first, uh, first uh, line of the article says, uh, "We have a lot more to say about Far Cry 5 this Friday, May 26 at 6 a.m. P PDT a.m. So that is 9 a.m. Eastern time if you guys are listening on Eastern." But to to whet your appetite and because we're terrible teas, here's a few brief po uh, postcards from Montana's beautiful Hope County, pulled together in a single teaser video. Hopefully, uh, I'll be showing that on the YouTube version of this video, or you can find it. Uh, and then there's also a new piece of art that has also been released. I'll be probably showing that too because this reveals a lot from what the game will be. Uh, so for the for the latest case, so there's not a lot of news per se. <coughs> Sorry about that. But looking at the piece of art, which is probably going to be a lot of people are uh, some somewhere I read that that's probably going to be the cover art for the game, which would make sense. Uh, it seems a lot, you know, when the, you it looks a lot like a um, 
sort of a religious cult type of thing going on. So you have this man here, lo which looks like a preacher because he's got a goblet of wine, I'm assuming, with a piece of bread, and he has probably a Bible on top of an American flag. And then on the right, he has weapons, and then he has a... Uh, on the left, in front of the table, he has a, a man tied up, not looking at the camera, but at the other way. And his back, it's written sinner on the back. And then you have men, you have four men sitting at the table and that uh, dressed, that have dog tags and dressed in the same attire, which are like sort of a grayish flannel, uh, I guess, sweater or something like that. And then there's a lady, and then I was, uh, I'm assuming on his left is like his right hand man. And then in the background, you have a church, of course, with a which I was saying with a flag, I guess the 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 his uh, his uh, cult's uh, flag with the American flag, and the, the 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 American flag that he's sitting in, that's on the table in front of him is actually like the cross of his. The, all the fifth, all the state stars are replaced by his sort of uh, cult's uh, logo on it. So that's pretty cool. And then there's a wolf, and then there's in the background there's like I'm assuming like a farm of some kind on fire. So what I'm enjoying about this game is I'm one one type of uh, of games I enjoy is I don't know why what I have is like crazy religious cults like in the middle of buttfuck nowhere basically like Outlast 2 where where it was taken to an extreme this I'm assuming it's the same thing where they control a, a large part of land and he he's in control it's his own piece of America that nobody's aware of and you have to I guess to, I'm assuming maybe you're gonna have to free it of some kind we're gonna see more in, the, in a couple days from when I'm recording this but it does seem like we're we're gonna be dealing with religious nut with case which I'm I'm all for those are so cool storylines where some guys always preaching uh, trying to try to try to make it uh, God the will of God or stuff like that and yeah that's gonna be an like the art style I'm, I'm just looking at it while I'm talking I'm just trying to describe it as best as I can and it, it looks really awesome I have to say it's it's really giving me the appetite for this game and hopefully it's gonna be releasing this here so something to fill the void of uh, Red Dead hopefully and we're gonna see more on uh, on Friday for sure so definitely tune in to wherever Ubisoft will release that I guess on Twitch and their and on the blog and on YouTube and all those points. And uh, yeah, so definitely check. Hopefully you guys are seeing the trailer right now on the YouTube. If you're watching the YouTube version and the artwork at the same time. I'll probably use that artwork as the, thumb, the thumbnail at the same time. Because it's a nice looking fucking poster art. <laughs> so yeah, we'll go from there. So that is it for the news, guys. So we will be moving on to kickstarting it. All right, this week start uh, kickstarting it. If you don't know what, if you're it's the first time listening to podcast, kickstarting it basically is where I go into Indiegogo, Kickstarter, or any platforms like that, and I find a game interesting and I pitch it to you guys, just so you guys can be aware of it and you can go uh, back it if you feel like it or fund it or wherever, whatever you want, term you want to use for whatever platform you're using for your kickstarting projects. So basically, the game I'm uh, promoting this week is called Breaking Point. So ba Breaking Point. I think they just started the Kickstarter. It says 28 days left to go. 28 days to go. Uh, yeah, so it's called Breaking Point, and uh, the 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 title, I guess, the the pitching line at the top there. It says Breaking Point is a persistent sandbox survival horror game with an emphasis on atmosphere, gunplay, and true modern horror elements. So a bit about the game itself. It's made by Alberin Games, uh, Pty Ltd. I don't know what Pty means. Uh, so so far, they they have uh, received. 86,247 86, Australian dollars, uh, which uh, pledged out of 403,000 Australian dollars. So I don't know how much that's in American. You're going to have to convert that for you guys, for yourself if you guys don't know what that is. So far, there is 1,025 uh, 1, backers for the game itself. So And, uh, of course, so the, the, the funding ends on June 21st at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So a bit about the game, let's go, uh, so what is Breaking Point? So the little description here says, Breaking Point, Breaking Point is a persistent permanent, perma, permanent death online multiplayer survival game set in the de decades following the downfall of modern society to a deadly viral outbreak. Our goal is to provide a balanced mixture of survival realism with a gameplay of a modern military shooter, a massive open world with hardcore survival and combat elements, in-depth environmental interaction, and terrifying and intelligent AI. Uh, your goal is to carve out your own space in this hostile world and decide whether or not to take part in a war that is raging between the rival faction that have taken over the land, surviving means, making an alliance, and taking 
what you need from opposing factions, whether it to be skills, resources, or their lives. So yeah, the the, the thing continues. It shows who's supporting who, um, big uh, big influencers are supporting them, and then they have all their tiers. Which the game, hopefully, uh, the trailer is being played right now on the YouTube version of this video. You can check that out. Uh, if not, I will be posting a link to the. Um, if uh, you go on the, if you don't have time to watch the YouTube video. Uh, you can still go to the YouTube video description and you'll see the link to the trailer that you guys can go check out there. Uh, yeah, the video does look nice. It looks like a mixture of Arma and, uh, sorry, Arma 3 and then uh, what other games? Because uh, any, any, like, Arma 3, uh, H1Z1, the uh, Just Survive portion of it, and or uh, what is the other game? I keep forgetting. Ah, um, oh, shit, why do I forget that game? Uh, Daisy, yeah, Daisy would be uh, something like that when you're looking at the trailer. It looks pretty promising, it looks pretty good. Uh, definitely, you guys can I'll leave a link in the description below, either on the uh, metimegamer.com uh, uh, post, uh, the, f the podcast post, or on the YouTube page. You guys can go check out the, kickstarting, the Kickstarter page there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the game looks pretty awesome. Definitely go check it out. And that's going to be it for the Kickstarting. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of the podcast this week. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Sorry, I had to cut out a couple of times there. I had a couple of things to uh, attend to in my all, all day to day life: <laughs> wife calling, the kid calling upstairs because she's out of bed or something like that. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Of course, if you enjoyed, of course, like I said at the beginning, rate the podcast on iTunes. I really appreciate it. And of course, you can you can rate the podcast on Stitcher and Google Play too. Uh, I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. Uh, and yeah, share the podcast with your friends and all that stuff. Definitely go subscribe to, uh, to uh, follow me over on on Twitch and Twitter and subscribe on YouTube. I really appreciate if you guys go check out on YouTube. I'm working really hard over there on YouTube and I'm quote on Twitch, but especially on YouTube uh, to get the subscriber count up. Uh, I do feel like for some reason a lot of people are viewing my videos. Like I'm at, I'm almost at thirty thousand views on my channel. But nobody's subscribing to the well. People, I'm, I'm right now. I'm going at about one, one or two subscriber a day, so it's going up, but it's not going up as fast as I would like it to be. Of course, I'm, I'm doing this more for fun, but of course, I do like to see growth of some kind. Uh, it is growing, but not at the pace, the, the pace I, that I would assume it would. But uh, hey, who knows? It might, it might change in the future, or, re or close, or, uh, or I don't know. <laughs> so en enough of that jibber jabber. Um, of course, if you want to support the podcast, you can do so by going to patreon.com for slash time gamer. Uh, there's no really uh, rewards of per se, but you can support the, the you can support everything I do uh, as a content creator uh, with the five dollar tier. And of course, from there you can you can do it or, or not if you want. Or you can go on twitch.tv while I'm streaming, donate there whatever you want a dollar, two dollar, or I think one dollar is the minimum you can actually donate. Or, uh, of course, just when you're going on YouTube, watch the ad before it helps out the channel. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is I need a new, com I need a, eventually a new computer uh, to make everything go faster, recording faster, recording better, uh, re get rid of some of this, the static when I'm recording or stuff like that, because a laptop creates a lot of static. It's weird. It's complicated. Of course, if you want to get a contact with me for either uh, cr comments, critique, uh, something I could change in the podcast, you can do so in the comments of the YouTube video itself, or you can do it at... Pod, uh, con sorry, what was it again? Uh, podcast at metimegamer.com. Uh, sorry, I haven't I haven't promoted that link in the, uh, that uh, email in a while. So yeah, you can do that at podcast at metimegamer.com. Of course, you can also send me if you want to support. If you want to also put put an ad on the podcast, you can do that there or on at uh, contact at metimegamer.com. Goes to the same. Uh, I'll see it either way. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this week's podcast. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed talking to you guys. That was fun. We're heading on to 30 minutes there, so that's going to be enough for today. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Like and follow and do all those things everywhere. I really appreciate that. Leave a comment. If you guys just say you want to leave your opinion about what stuff that I talked today, of course, do so. And I'll be glad to answer you. Usually, sorry about that. Usually, I'm pretty quick to answer. So you guys can definitely do that. So thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening. And I will see you in the next podcast or video. Keep on keeping on.